you know, Ms. Kaur, when you look at such incidents come to the fore, of course, one one hand, the question comes up as to is the government doing enough. On the other hand, the question comes up as to what can you do to prevent such instances. On the other, of course, at this point in time, because the, the police are still investigating this matter, they're saying they've got some leads, they're not going to divulge too many details. But overall, to tackle such crimes, especially, you know, such audacious ones to get into a PG like this, slit the th woman's throat and, you know, get away with it. How do you really look at policing really becoming more effective to ensure such incidents do not occur? You know, it seems like a crime of passion, you know, the way she has been stabbed multiple times and her throat has, her throat has been sl slit. It is a crime of passion. Maybe it was a close friend or a, an intimate partner who's done it. I mean, definitely it is an intimate partner, the way the, I mean, the state of the murder shows it. And uh, definitely he'll be caught sooner or later. Yeah. But the thing is, girls also have to be careful. Of course, I'm not denying that law and order has to be strengthened and police has to take more care. But 11.20 p.m., what kind of PG is this that anybody can walk in and walk out at freely? So security of the PG also has to be ensured. And the patrolling vans in the area, police patrolling had been there. It wouldn't have been that easy because uh, around all the PGs, they should specially check. It must have taken at least half an hour or so for the person to come in, murder her and then get out. And in that period, nobody has checked him. He's gone into a girl's PG unchecked, unnoticed and gone out also. And this girl, we heard a neighbor who said that uh, they heard noises, but they were too scared to come out. So maybe other people in the neighborhood could have come out and caught him. But, uh, you know, this general apathy the public has, ki, Hame kya? you know, it is happening to the neighbor. But whatever is left unattended, sooner or later, the same energy reaches you somehow. So that apathy also has to be taken care of. Okay, but uh, Iskor, when you talk about, you know, imposing the restrictions as far as timing is concerned, do you feel that's that's the right uh, move because you have working women who are in PGs? Do you feel that they should be told, uh, you know, what time they should enter no, or exit I'm not talking or you know, who should be allowed inside girls. or not? Uh, no, now, no, that, that... I'm, not, I'm not talking for a, cur a curfew hour for girls. What I mean is there should be some kind of check at the entry and exit at the gate, at the grill. We saw a grill just now. The grill could have been locked and when the girl comes in, she knocks yeah. or presses a bell, someone opens. So that the ingress and egress is not that free. It seems that it was free. Even at 11.20 p.m., yeah. anybody can walk in to walk out. So it is not about a girl restricting girls. Well, it is that, about restricting you know, these question entry. marks do come up. The police will have to really inform us because we are still waiting. They're saying that this is an initial, uh, you know, part of the investigation and uh, they don't want to divulge details. But of course, how did he manage to enter? Did he give the watchman a slip? Was there a watchman? Are there CCTVs? Now, these are things that need to be looked at. And at the end of the day, of course, people who are renting out their places, especially those operating PGs, there have been time and again governments who have been mulling a lot of rules. But due to, of course, the big real estate uh, mafia and the number of people that are involved, somewhere this takes a backseat. Uh, how important is it really, uh, you know, Brinda, to bring in rules, framing rules and to ensure that CCTVs are mandatory? Because at the end of the day, security of the women and the men, whoever it is at the PGs as well is important. And the onus lies on the people who are making money of, uh, you know, these people who are paying huge amounts, especially in areas like Kormangla, Indranagar, or this, for that matter, not just in Bengaluru, in other parts of the country as well. Look, there has to be some kind of a monitoring by the government. And like you mentioned, the real estate groups, mafia, whatever we might want to call them. But if there is a PG, there has to be information with the local police, as well as the government having that information. Who does the PG belong to? How many people can be accommodated in the PG? But all of that said and done, why is the security by the PG owners so lax? How is it that a PG, which it looks like a very big building, there seems to be no security over there. Should there not be a security sitting round the clock and um, ensures who's going in and coming out? One, two, I would also want to say that the numbers, the statistics that we are talking about should not discourage anybody and say that, you know, the numbers are going very high. We should be saying that anytime any crime happens, report. Because we've always been lax in reporting. Yeah. We don't want to report these crimes. We don't want to get into the uh, courts. And that's and probably one of the reasons why we see a spike in the number of cases that are, uh, you know, coming to the fore, especially in terms of molestation and rape. Because there are women, of course, who are coming forward and, you know, reporting these cases. Yes. I have two more points. Next is 
what is the court doing? What are all the courts doing? How long does it take for a FIR to be put into a charge sheet and presented in court? The tedious, cumbersome processes that delay, the system delays all of these. So there is an impunity by all perpetrators, not only in Bangalore, but uh, across the, the country. The next point is citizens. We have forgotten our civic responsibility and duty. We've become mere, sp mere spectators. Some of those women say that they heard sounds and noises. Why would you not go down and check? We don't yeah. know. Of course, the person would have made a wrong decision. That's an intimate partner, maybe a good friend. We don't know what the person's relation relationship is. And she would have allowed the person to come there. Most PGs that we know have a common area where your guests can come and your friends can come. Those who are not residing inside that PG. And you're not allowed to take them to your room. But that is, that is secondary. Whatever may be the reason. You heard noise. You heard sounds. Go down and check. It is our responsibility to keep an eye out yeah. for each other. Even if there was a security, there is no security in every floor. There cannot be security you know, in front of every door. Yeah. So each other, have we have to help each other. And I think that sense of duty towards my neighbor is literally failed. And it is sad that a Bangalore, which was a city that knew your neighbors, knew the community, knew each other. If some noise yeah. or something happened elsewhere, we were always going there. That has eroded. Of course, and I think that, 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 is that has completely that changed. Comes back. And in, in many localities. In, in many localities. Yes. So it could yes. be a Koramangal. Let me also bring in Vijay, Vijay Prakash here. 